Hello, hello and good afternoon. The time is one o'clock and we're ready to get going with today's event. On behalf of HC Anderson Capital, I would like to welcome everyone to our presentation of the Q1 report together with Explorer. My name is Philip Coombs and today I've got the pleasure of welcoming CEO Sten Kierkeback and CFO Michael Clement back to the HC Anderson Capital platform. The topic of today's event will be a presentation of the Q1 results. The event will begin with a presentation from Sten and Michael and then move on to a Q&A. So please feel free to ask questions in the chat throughout. You should be able to find it down to your right. That's everything from me. So without further ado, I'd like to pass over to Sten and Michael to talk us through the report. Thank you so much for that introduction. Uh, my name is Sten Kirkbeck, founder and CEO, and with me with Michael Clement, our CFO. And we'll guide you through this uh, Q1 result presentation. Um, so I, as mentioned in the introduction, I will first give you a quick Q1 uh, highlight, uh, some of the key takeaways, and Michael will take you through the financial updates, and then I will end the presentation with the outlook. Uh, very high level, uh, Q1 was a very important quarter for us in order to establish the strategy for our growth and execution going forward into this year. Uh, and we are very happy to announce a 37% growth year on year, ending Q1 with 74 million NOC revenue. All of that revenue, 33.6 million, came from recurring revenue services, which is also up 66% year on year pro forma from last year. That also means that we ended this quarter with a subscriber base of more than 125,000 paying subscribers, also up 55% year on year from last year. Our gross earning has also increased, increased actually 115% year on year uh, to 41 million NOC, uh, showcasing 55% gross margin. Ending Q1 with the EBITDA at NOC negative 2.9 million and a very strong cash balance at 133 million NOC. So that's high level, some of the key numbers for Q1. Michael will shortly afterward take you through some of the details as well. Uh, we had a handful of very key and very important focus areas for uh, the first quarter. Uh, first is for us to really demonstrate the ability to continue to build a very strong retail footprint. Uh, that has been very important, particularly in this year, 2022, as we might potentially see in general in the retail industry, a potential uh, stabilization or potentially even reduction of the ability to end consumer to buy new product from uh, inflation and uncertainty in the market. For that reason, it's been very important for the business to increase the number of retailers selling and distributing our pro products. Very successful uh, accomplishing. So we'll come back to that in the outlook as well. A second very important part of the focus area this quarter has been to prepare our mobile service provider solution uh, to scale it. Last year, we acquired a Nordic MVNO uh, solution provider, uh, and this quarter has really been important in order to uh, prepare this, um, this acquisition in order to scale that model into the global market. And as we previously announced, our objective for 2022 has been to replicate that model into one to three new markets. We have also transitioned a company for, from a traditional ODM to an OEM strategy, meaning that we are taking even more control on the IP stack of our physical product. We are launching three products this year. Two of them is completely built from scratch by Explora, so the OEM strategy. We also successfully managed a quite a challenging supply chain situation across the world. Uh, we have done so in a good way. So in this quarter, we have not seen any deliveries not being able to execute on our end due to this situation. We'll continue to monitor and deliver and manage that situation. We have also had some key new hires into our software division. As we have previously stated that we have first previously focused a lot on our selling of the smartwatches. Now we have introduced uh, our MVNO solution, also scaling that into the global market. And with additional focus, 
uh, for our service strategy, we have now uh, even further extended the team working with our solution in that regard. And we have also continued to build the overall team, as well as we have implemented a new ERP system in order to increase the efficiency on the overall business. So that was some of the key high level um, uh, updates from our Q1. And now Michael will take you through some more of the details from the financial perspective. Thank you, Stan. We operate <clears throat> uh, uh, and sell into the retail industry. We sell uh, through online channels. Uh, we sell uh, directly to retail uh, through their online channels or also their physical outlets. Uh, and we also sell through telcos. But as with uh, most retail industries, uh, the first quarter of the year is seasonally the weakest quarter. Uh, and the momentum builds through the year into the all important fourth quarter of the year. Uh, in the first quarter of uh, 2022, we reported revenues of 74 million NOC, uh, up 37% year over year from 54 million NOC uh, in the first quarter of last year. Looking into where these revenues are derived from, uh, we have two key uh, segment areas. One uh, is uh, devices, so the selling of smartwatches. That comprised uh, 39.9 million NOC in the first quarter of this year. Uh, that was down 22% from the same quarter last year. Our services, uh, recurring services, comprises uh, subscriptions, mobile subscriptions that are used on the smartwatches. Uh, on average, we have our clients for around three years. Uh, we have these services, as you see from the geographical split, largely in the Nordic region, where we have four MVNO setups. Uh, services amounted to 33.6 million, up 66% for total group revenues of 74 million. Uh, on a geographic basis, in Q1, Norway was our largest market in uh, uh, on group revenues, followed by Germany and then Sweden. We have, uh, since the start of the uh, company in 2016, uh, had a relentless focus on building a scalable and profitable uh, business model. We've been through seven generations of products and for each generation, we've taken the learnings and tried to improve the products and the cost mix. Uh, and we've seen a general uh, improvement in our underlying gross margins over the last couple of years. Uh, with introduction of uh, mobile services from last year, that trend has continued. Uh, so in the first quarter of this year, we report gross earnings of 41 million NOC for a margin of 55%. That represents a growth of 115% from the same uh, quarter last year, <clears throat> when we had uh, gross margins of 35%, so up by roughly 20 percentage points. Uh, that is largely driven by the introduction of services. Uh, <clears throat> but of course, when you look at this over, over a longer period of time, uh, this is a trend that we've been very focused on and which we through, and hopefully over time and in increasing service content will continue to drive and improve. As mentioned, our recurring service revenues uh, are our mobile subscriptions following the sale of smartwatches. In Q1, 33.6 million, up 66% pro forma, uh, which means that we are at an annualized run rate of ARR of more than 134 million NOC. Uh, over the last four quarters, four Q rolling, uh, we're at uh, 100, 120 million NOC, up 74% uh, from the same period of last year. And we exit the quarter with 124,000 mobile subscribers. That is a growth of 55% from the 80,000 subscribers we had in the Nordic region after the first quarter of 2021. So our, our, our um, subscriber base has grown gradually and consistently over the last few years, um, we are now uh, at a penetration rate in our target segment, kids aged four to 10 years, 
of close to 6% in the Nordic region. The market where we've been the longest is Norway, where we have 17% penetration of kids in the age group. That means close to one in five Norwegian children between the ages of four to 10 are using an Explorer watch with an Explorer subscription. In Sweden, where we uh, have been the second longest, uh, we are at 4% penetration. And in Finland, we are at 3% penetration. Uh, with the closing in on 1.5% penetration in the Danish market, where we've only been 15 months. Uh, so, so this is growing uh, nicely. Uh, this, you see the seasonal pattern uh, on new subscribers uh, here as well, as we see with our sales. Q1 is seasonally the weakest quarter in terms of what new additions. Moving then on to uh, uh, quickly to the to to the numbers, you see the PNL uh, 74 million NOC in revenues, of which um, 33.6 from recurring uh, service revenues, uh, gross margins of 55 percent, with gross earnings up 115 percent year over year, with EBITDA at minus 2.9 million, an improvement from a loss of close to 11 million in the first quarter last year. Uh, we are amortizing on the goodwill and inta uh, intangible items from the acquisition of Explora Mobile Holding um, uh, from last year under uh, Norwegian GAP accounting principles. Uh, so our operating profit uh, is at minus 14 uh, and a half million uh, versus a, a loss of 11.6 million last year. Explorer's uh, balance sheet uh, is uh, largely influenced by working capital items. Uh, total balance sheet uh, or balance sheet totals are at 514 million NOC this quarter, down from 576.7 million NOC at the end of Q4, uh, of which financial fixed assets uh, amount to 248 million NOC. As you see, goodwill from the last year's acquisition uh, is at 160. 8 million NOC with intangible values from customer contracts at 55.3 million NOC. Accounts receivable uh, sharply down uh, during Q1 uh, uh, on collection of uh, strong Q4 21 sales. Inventories are slightly down uh, on seasonality uh, from Q4 into Q1, and we exit the quarter with 133.5 million NOC in cash. We have interest bearing debt of 29.2 million, uh, down uh, 0.6 million uh, from Q4. And we have an equity ratio of uh, 75% with equity at 387.7 million at the end of Q1. Finally, taking a brief look at the cash flow in Q1, uh, cash from operating activities totaled 21.7 million positive. Uh, of which cash earnings uh, was a negative 3.5 million, and we had a working capital release of 25.2 million from lower receivables and inventories, offset also by lower accounts payable. Cash from investment activities this quarter was minus 27.5 million. 20 million was an earnout payment for the remaining payment of Explorer Mobile Holding last year, uh, acquired last year. The remaining seven and a half million uh, is um, largely capitalized development costs uh, of an excess of five million NOC, and uh, the investments in new ERP systems of around two million NOC. Cash from financing, uh, minus 0.5 million on debt payments with a net change in cash of minus 6.3 million for any cash balances of 133.5 at the end of Q1. So with that, uh, I'll leave the world over to Stan again for a uh, dive into the road ahead. Thank you so much, Michael. Um, let's look into the future and see what that will bring. Um, let's see. I would like to start that section by <clears throat> summarizing some of our key strategies for growth in 2022. Uh, first and foremost, as mentioned also in the introduction, a uh, very strong focus to continue to develop existing and new markets to drive revenue growth. 
secondly, uh, it is to replicate our successful Nordic business model with the MNO setup into one to three new international markets. And the third is to introduce new services in order to support and build recurring revenue streams. So that's the three high level strategies for growth in 2022. And how to make this happen in a somehow more challenging year in general from the consumer market 2022 versus 2021. First and foremost, we will have a very clear focus to continue uh, to focus on our very successful markets per today, which is particularly in the Nordic and the German market. We'll continue to build strong omnichannel presence in those markets, uh, investing in our retailers, in our telco and in our distribution partners. And then, of course, we'll continue also to build new distribution partner into new market. In particular, U.S. will be important market for growth in 2022. We'll also select in some particular markets, given the trends we are seeing in the retail market currently. In some market, we'll continue more to focus on our online channels, where we can more so control uh, price points as well as additional marketing tools to be executed. We'll also then, of course, um, focus on our connectivity strategy outside of the Nordic market, allowing us to increase the revenue per customer as well, adding connectivity, our own Explorer Connect. And then also we will monetize on our uh, position to launch three new products into the market in 2022. And always we see an increased interest from our distributors, our retailers and our telcos in the years when we are introducing and launching new products. This is the first year we'll actually go to market with three new connected products. And also we will be investing even more into our sales organization to continue to have even more focus on sales. Um, as mentioned, three new products this year, uh, all uh, in the timeline estimated for 2022. The first product we are releasing is our new entry level product uh, called XGO3. Our strategy has always been to have two price points into the market, one entry level product, which is our new XGO3. And this year we'll introduce two premium products, X6 and X6 Pro. And the key differences on those two products is that the X6 Pro will be launched as an eSIM product with even higher standard and functionality on the product. We have successfully been the first company to execute and roll out an eSIM product into the market. We've done that in collaboration with Deutsche Telekom some years ago, and this will be the successor of that product, our X6 Pro. Um, we then also are very happy to announce our first really big retail collaboration in the US market. Um, we announced that quite quickly, actually, after our presence in the US, after two years of lockdown, we uh, had the opportunity to start to establish our uh, offices in, in US immediately after this year's CES in January. And we recently announced the collaboration with Walmart, and we are preparing to launch the world's largest retailer. Uh, and um, Walmart will list the full line of uh, smartwatches we are carrying initially to be sold online. We have now also uh, recently announced a collaboration with Target, also one of the largest retailers in the US uh, for our uh, category. And Explorer is a approved vendor at Target and also will list the full line of smartwatches also initially to be sold online. We have spent some time emphasizing the importance of our global rollout of MVNO's solutions, so we can include Explorer Connect. And as also Michael showed you some of the numbers, currently we have achieved now roughly 6% market penetration in the Nordic markets, meaning that 6% of that market, 4 to 10, uh, not only have Explorer Watch, but are actually using Explorer Watch with Explorer Connectivity SIM solution included. And if you can look at uh, geographically opportunity, the Nordics represent roughly 2 million kids in the target group, Europe 25 million and North America 30 million. So as you can imagine, this is a huge growth opportunity for the company to replicate that model into the global market. And for that reason in particular, we are very happy to announce our first uh, market outside the Nordics in UK. Um, in um, 
the first uh, collaboration we recently announced with IQ Mobile, allowing us to launch our product with connectivity in the UK market. We had a target this year, 2022, to announce one to three global MVNO solution. And also, we can now bring uh, to the market uh, the news that we have currently secured MNO agreements, both in the French market as well as the US market. So already now, we can confirm uh, that we have secured three markets outside Nordic, UK, France and US to execute our successful and highly profitable uh, connectivity strategy. We're working on the launch details and we'll come back to that when we're getting closer to launch. That takes us into the outlook. Um, and again, we would like to emphasize our three key strategies to growth, uh, where we have announced or communicated a target for 50% growth in 2022 that will come from developing our existing and new markets. Like I said, even though we can see a market that is somehow more unstable this year versus previously, we'll compensate that with increasing our uh, strong retail distribution and telco presence. So we're working with new markets and new distributors. Uh, we'll replicate the model. That's why with MNO model with connectivity, that's why we are very happy to announce already three new partnership, allowing us to move into UK, France and uh, US. And also throughout this year, we will be introducing new products and new services. Our value added services will be aligned with the rollout of connectivity. So we'll be able to then sell both connectivity and upcoming value added services in our premium pack. We'll continue to monitor the uh, supply chain. We're not expecting that to be easier throughout this year, but we will hopefully manage that as successfully as we have done so far. Um, and of course, there will be increased uncertainty for the consumer spending, uh, given the fact of the macroeconomics. But again, we are hoping to compensate that with even more distribution and partnership. And also, Explorer is securely funded to deliver on the growth plans we have and ambitious for 2022. So that brings this presentation to the end, and we look forward to moving into the Q&A session. Thank you to both Sten and Michael for that presentation of the quarterly report. We've got some nice questions in the chat throughout, so we'll move on to the Q&A now. And I can see the first questions are all to do with the service revenue. So that yeah. seems like a, a great place to start. So the first person has asked, how do you define your recurring services? Mm -hmm. Currently, our recurring services has primarily come from our mobile subscription which is a monthly subscriptions. Uh, and later it will also include our premium uh, services, both of them to be defined as recurring service revenue. That's great. And so these are for the, the connectivity services within the watch. Currently the connectivity service, the monthly uh, subscription for having our SIM card and Going forward this year, it will also be to include our premium services, the value added services we'll put on top of it to have more functionality and features. Very nice. So the next question we have is asking around the stickiness of the subscribers. And I suppose this links to the, the current market conditions and maybe some risk off attitude. So how is your perception of your, your current um, subscribers and their, their stickiness. Sure, I can, I can address that. Uh, we are addressing a target market today uh, with a product for children aged four to 10. In other words, a smartwatch, a phone uh, on the rest of the child being used before the child moves over to a smartphone. Uh, four to ten average is around seven years uh, of age, and we know that at around uh, the age of ten, the children move on to the smartphone. So we have today our subscribers for an average of just in excess of three years. That has been relatively stable over time, and between the four markets that we are in, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Denmark. 
Um, we uh, so so uh, and the churn that we have uh, is, is then mostly as a result of the children moving on to a smartphone. We are working on uh, ways to address that. Uh, as an MVNO, we can sell SIM subscriptions for smartwatches, but we can also do it for other products. Uh, so we will this year uh, introduce a uh, an application that will be uh, could potentially be uh, pre-installed on mobile phones, smartphones. That can be a way for us to extend our customer relationship with our existing clients into the world of smartphones. That's great. Thank you for that. So the next question asks around the service revenue in Germany. And I suppose this alludes to the graphic that was shown earlier in the presentation where we can see that the growth in device sales is really quite strong in Germany, but it has a lesser proportion of the service revenue. So could you maybe put some words on that for us? Yeah. I think it's a very uh, relevant question because obviously Germany has been one of the biggest growing market for us. Um, like I said, it's two ways for us to drive recurring revenue service. One is with the uh, SIM connectivity and one is with the premium services, so upgrade to more content. Currently in the German market, we have worked very closely with Deutsche Telekom to grow that market. And of course, for that reason, the current recurring revenue comes from uh, Deutsche Telekom SIM cards. They are selling their own SIM cards. So currently we do not have recurring revenues in the German market. When we announce one to three MNO partners this year to introduce our own SIM subscription, of course, Germany is one of those markets we potentially would like to enter into with our SIM connectivity. Currently, we have announced UK, France, and US. We will also, of course, work with the German. However, our premium services, which we are launching later this year, even though you have purchased a uh, Deutsche Telekom SIM card, Explorer SIM card, more SIM card, or whomever, you are allowed and able to upgrade to premium content regardless of the mobile phone provider. Meaning that even in the German market where currently most SIM subscribers have Deutsche Telekom, they will still be able to upgrade to our premium recurring revenues. That's great. Thank you for that. I think this could be a really nice place to to comment on the difference between the distribution partners and the um, and the service revenue partners. So I guess this is alluding to the difference between the partnership with EE or, or Deutsche Telekom compared to the partnership with IQ Mobile or AT&T. Absolutely, absolutely. And uh, uh, the two ladders, uh, you know, their, their partnership, giving us tools to sell a product. Uh, so so uh, it gives us the tool to sell an Explorer uh, SIM card together with our product. Whereas EE and Deutsche Telekom and others, they are distributors, resellers of our products, of our devices. So they use our devices, our smartwatches, to sell their own subscriptions. And also to add on that, we normally divide the market into three big channels, online, retailers, and telcos. The two first market, online and retailer, we will try to sell as many as possible watches with our own SIM connectivity. With the telcos, they would of course like to sell their own SIM connectivity. But also, even though they are selling with a Deutsche Telekom SIM, we can still drive recurring revenues from our services. Online and retail, we'll try to bundle our watches with our own SIM connectivity, SIM cards. That's very nice. And I suppose these, I suppose Explorer is free to sell both its own SIM cards and have the, the partnerships in within the same markets. There's no barrier there. No. Great, great. So we'll move on to the next question, which asks, given the current market conditions, has there been a change in your focus from growth to maybe more prioritizing cash flows? Or is it not in the maybe it's not it's not in the Explorer DNA to change the strategy looking um, looking beyond the Nordics? 
I, I think it's more so what, what I said initially and what we already had defined as key strategies for growth in 2022. Uh, I think for us, it's been important to emphasize the acceleration of even more distribution partners, uh, potentially uh, weighing up for decrease of sale per store. We add that to have more stores selling our product. But then, of course, we have this very nice effect of introducing our MBO solution outside of the Nordics because mm -hmm. not only is it a better onboarding and customer experience for the customer to just open the box and activate the SIM card, it's already there. However, that also dramatically increases the revenue per customer and the profitability per customer as well. So this strategy really aligns well with both growth, but also provide us a lot better profitability, which will be, of course, important in, in, in today's market. Yeah, and finally, I mean, also with with the connectivity, uh, working capital wise is very beneficial uh, compared to sales or devices. So, uh, so there are many many factors backing that strategy. That's great. Thank you for that response. The next question we have is regarding your recent announcement with the partnership with Roblox and the uh, the co development there, and it asks whether there are plans to build more of these partnerships within the gaming industry? Potentially, yes. Uh, and of course, we carefully selected which platform would we like to explore our first collaboration like this. We ended with Roblox. We're very excited to see how this collaboration and this uh, project uh, will turn out. We are very optimistic about it because it's a huge platform relevant for our target group. And of course, if, if we see an increased engagement uh, and value in that regard, we have already defined our platform to be agnostic, not only to hardware uh, we put on, but also integration toward such partnership. If you recall, we some years ago already started to work with Sony PlayStation and did very exciting integration in that regard. Roblox is our next kind of very exciting partnership in that direction. And if it turns out to be a success, as we hope, uh, we will definitely explore even uh, more such uh, collaborations. That's great. Thank you for that. I can see that we're out of questions and also out of time. So it's a good place to, to round off here. So I'd like to say thank you both to Sten and Michael and to all of the viewers for joining us today. And hopefully we will see you again on the HC Anderson Capital platform soon. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much. Cheers. Bye-bye.